In this session, we'll be detailing you about herbaria. We've already talked about herbaria is one among the taxonomic aids. And the herbaria is done for plants. We preserve the plant specimen. Let's suppose there is a plant growing in some area. And after that particular time, let's suppose say after 10 years or 20 years, that plant won't be there. Or you are unsure about that particular plant will be there in that environment or not. And you want to save that particular plant specimen so to show maybe your students, next generation, that these used to be the plant, this was the like leaf structure, they used to be the veins and this was the venation present in the leaf or any more features about that particular plant and the plant is not there. So herbaria would suggest you the easy way to cultivate all these plants in the laboratory. You are preserving those plant specimen, so you also ca call herbaria as dry garden. Now what do we do in herbaria? So first of all, when you will be looking herbaria, it actually is the quick referral source for taxonomic aids. Because just after seeing the herbaria, you can detail you about, okay, this plant was like this. These used to be the leaves. This was the venation present in the leaf. So this will give you the accurate information about that particular specimen, which is there in herbaria. When you talk about herbaria, the herbaria follow a system called Bentham and Hooker system of classification, which we'll be detailing you about. Bentham and Hooker, they gave the natural classification system, which we'll be detailing you about in next uh, classes. But uh, if you can talk about some of the very uh, renowned herbaria in the world, the Royal Botanical Garden Herbaria, which is in Kew, England, is one among the famous herbaria. In India, we have got the herbaria called Central National Herbaria, which is protected by Indian Botanical Garden, Kolkata. If you can talk about herbaria preparation, you can see some of the herbaria. So herbaria is something like the chart preparation you must be doing in your earlier classes in the schools. You take the chart paper, you present some images on that and then down you put a label that this herbaria or this particular chart paper is of uh, uh, this particular you know place, this particular organism and then you give the details about it. The same way what you do is you also prepare the herbaria on some sheets and uh, committee has fixed this particular sheet sizes also the sheet size should be 41 to 29 centimeter sometimes this size is asked in form of inches could be 16 and a half to 11 and a half inches so you'll have to remember both of the data that it is in centimeter and 16 and a half to 11 and a half inches is in inch so what do you do while making the hub area first of all you go for the collection of specimen let's suppose you want to prepare the specimen for a particular plant so first of all you will go for the collection of your specimen your specimen could be any part of the plant or whole of the part now what happens during collection so when you go for the collection you basically take care of few things what are these things the plant should not suffer from chlorosis chlorosis is a disease where leaf turns yellow so your leaf shouldn't be yellow Second thing what you take care of, the plant should have any infection like bacterial, fungal or viral infection. So you'll have to figure out the healthy plant. Once you take out the healthy plant, you need to put that particular plant parts or a specimen, whatever you're going to make herbaria for. You need to put that particular specimen in some plastic bags or some steel containers. Those are called vasculum. When you collect those plants, you bring them to the laboratory and then you help in drying. What do you do? You take the sheets, say maybe newspaper sheets or any paper sheets. Now put all those plant specimen onto that particular paper sheet so that excess water, the plant may contain excess water. So excess water has to be removed from that particular parts. Now what you're doing is like you are wrapping the specimen over the but what you call newspaper or maybe the paper sheets and you were completely drying the excess amount of water but there may be the internal water present which you cannot take out and fungus attacks wherever it gets the moisture so what happens is you may remove out the excess water but that internal water of the plant can cause diseases or maybe if plant accumulates moisture in a while that causes the fungal infection so you need to avoid that fungal infection for that you need to follow the poisoning which you do with the help of 0.1 percent hgcl2 that is mercury chloride mercury chloride is basically a fungicide so what are you doing after drying off your leaves 
you put that particular leaves into 0.1% HgCl2 solution so that this fungicide will remain present with the leaves and in future if something is happening some fungus and all attack are coming the HgCl2 will prevent the leaves from fungal infection after that you will be mounting your specimen over the sheet I've already told you the size of this sheet which is 41 by 29 centimeter now you maintain that particular sheet put particular label that label will be coming on later what you do is start mounting your specimen over the sheet once you're done with this you stitch the sheet because once you will be taking that sheet some or the other way your plant parts can fall down so what you do is like after placing all those plant parts you will have to stitch the herb area uh, whatever the sheet you have you will have to stitch it now what you do is like on the right corner say down what you do is you will put a label the label size is also fixed which is 7 by 12 centimeter what all you need to mention in the label is the date the date of that particular collection where you are making the herb area the place from where you have collected the plant samples english name vernacular name now vernacular name is the local name any of the farmer if it is coming to see your herb area may not get english name may not get scientific name so for that you need to give the vernacular name also let's suppose the person of your same country it's coming but he is not of same state he may not recognize the vernacular name for that you need to mention the english name also but let's suppose some non-english speaking person someone from span who speaks spanish and doesn't know english you need to mention the botanical name of that particular plant also apart from that you also mention the family of the plant and the name of the collector who has collected so that this will give you the quick referral source okay this particular plant is of this next session will be detailing you about botanical gardens